Omale was Stanley's dream. How did you handle the drastic life change, especially considering like the kind of upbringing that you had and the environment that you were used to seeing? I'm, co I'm coming from like the, the streets, you know what I mean? Street, street. There's just something that, that the long time away from her actually did to mm. us, did to our relationship. People just label your work Afro depression. People just don't get the importance of like being able to relay your truth and like your journey in your music. The Afro depression is a, it's a vibe. You know, enjoying. It. I'm not in the industry. You think I'm not? I'm not. I am just me. How long will it take you to realize? So you come out with a song, the song blows, and everybody's like, oh my lay, da, 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 and you're like, ah, like, am I gonna be able to do this again? My fans are basically, I know my fans because my fans are like me. It wasn't a fluke, I'm not a fluke, I'm actually who I think that I am. to the Wumi Bello show today. I am so excited. I'm gonna be sitting down with an Afrobeat artist whose ability to storytell through his music has been nothing but captivating. In the last three years that he's kind of come into the music industry, we have all fallen in love. So I am speaking to none other than the incredible superstar, Omar Lay, okay? We're about to find out who he is, have a core cool understanding how he got from point A to point B. So let's get into it. On my late in the building, how are we feeling? I'm all right. Feeling You're looking good, nice. Huh? I like Thank your hair. You. you too. Was it the same hair that I, last time I saw you? No, no. no it's a bit different. I change. My mood changes every time. Yeah. What's the vibe <laughs> of this hair? What we call this? This is more. This is more. My Holy Spirit vibe. Holy, oh Jesus, is that, the, is that where we're walking in right now? Holy Spirit vibe. Yeah, this yeah. is more Holy Spirit vibe. I feel you. So we actually tried to um, have a, a conversation a little while ago and we did like a little car situation. Mm -hmm. We basically got in a car together. I was driving and we were talking, can I mm. record it? Then we realized, I was like, you know what? He's too much of like an in-depth person for us to try and do this in a car. It just doesn't make sense. We need to be seated and yeah. we need to be like, it needs to be a direct. Yeah. So I'm really happy we're finally here. We're about yeah, to do I'm this. Excited. I'm excited, it's been too long. I know, it's been how long ago was it? That was like three I months ago. Yeah, three months. That yeah. was ages ago. All right, cool. So we're gonna get into the conversation, but before doing so, I like to play a little game to just ease us into the vibe and just get people to like, or even myself to know you a little bit more in like a different way. So, so it's called this or that. Okay. Right, which is you get the gist, like this or that. First question, slow Afrobeat or up-tempo up Afrobeat? Up-tempo, up -tempo. yeah. Yeah, what's the yeah, reason? Right now, right, right now in my life, mm -hmm. I'm in, like I said, I'm in my Holy Spirit vibe, yeah. so. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that's that mean? Like, it's like, ginger that's like yeah. you want to move more you you're think? in like a happy spirit yeah happy spirit I love holy that. spirit okay london or sweden because you've been in sweden a lot london L london. london why is that what do you love about us over here in london i can get nigerian food i forget my you know jollof rice <laughs> beans wachie from yeah. ghana it's so easy to yeah, get yeah. here in london but you question know. do you feel like it's so, okay, so when I went, to, you're going to kill me for this, but when I went to Nigeria last, mm -hmm. I was saying that I actually feel like the Nigerian food in London is actually better. Nigerian than the, food. Than the food that, than the Nigerian food that I have in Nigeria, yeah. Oh no, because you don't know, you, you're not used to the real thing. You don't how long, so. did, how long did you spend in Nigeria? I was only, I, I've been, I've been back and forth for a minute, but um, I don't usually go for anything more than two Were weeks. Were you born in Nigeria? Yeah, yeah, I was born in Nigeria. How long did you spend? A f oh, six years, five years. Yeah, you didn't catch the vibe of I'm the real I'm screaming. Thing. No, but yeah. I love, like, Nigerian food is my number one, but I just feel like it's, I the don't know, one I in the, You feel like the one the in one London in is better than, yeah. that's what I'm saying, that you, that's what I'm saying, you didn't spend enough time in Nigeria Maybe. to actually catch the vibe of the real one. You think so? Yeah, Maybe. that's why you're used to this one, this <laughs> London one. But trust me, if you eat food from Nigeria, uh, different different story that uh, one. What are you saying? Don't ah. play with me, bro. <laughs> I hate Don't play. you. Okay, cool. So are you a person with a set routine or spontaneous living? Spontaneous living, because mm. that's how my life has been yeah. the past few few years. Spontaneous. I still have my time when I plan things, but yeah. a lot of times it's like on the spot. 
I love that. Okay, cool. I feel like that kind of leads us perfectly into just kind of talking about, you know, you as a person. I find you really interesting. I think I've, I always say this to you every time I meet you, especially the first time when we were speaking, I was like, this man has such an interesting story, interesting journey. And I think you are someone who just, number one, I respect, but also I feel like you've really manifested your life mm. in like the most beautiful way by being super intentional. And I always say that, you know, when you meet people, there's no better way of being able to understand someone's mind, understand who a person is, other than like breaking down their childhood or having some sort of understanding of what their childhood was like. So how would you say your childhood or your upbringing has molded you? Yeah, my childhood is a long story. Yeah. Um, but to keep it short, I come from Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's rough. It's rough in Port Harcourt. If you know Port Harcourt, if you Google Port Harcourt right now, mm. you would see the stories, especially the hood that I grew up in. Marine Bays, um, yeah, it's, it was it was really tough. It mm. was a tough childhood, but then I'm still happy that I had to go through all that because, mm. you know, being here in London with all that experience, it's like I see it differently from how you see London. Mm. I see Sweden differently from how you see it because mm. I have a whole different reality perspective, perspective of how. So, yeah, um, my childhood is basically what shaped me into who I am right now, yeah. my music, my dressing, how I'm feeling, mm. of course, my childhood, Port Harcourt. Yeah. You said that you said that you had a really tough upbringing. And obviously, I understand. I know that you know Port Harcourt is there, so mm. there's a lot to it, mm -hmm. and there can be a lot of um, challenges that comes from living there. But in terms of you as an individual, when we think about wanting to understand what your home environment was like, what you know your 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 various like dynamics. I don't know if you got any siblings. Mm -hmm. You know what was what was that dynamic like, and what was what was tough about that? Uh what was tough about having yeah, siblings? Yeah, no, not, not necessarily having siblings, but what was your home environment like? Like, was that the tough part or was it the was it the the fact that you were living in Port Harcourt? Like, what was basically, what was the tough part? Of course, living in Port Harcourt wasn't yeah. tough because that was everything that I knew. Yeah. Um, but what was tough was how I was living in Port Harcourt. Because, mm. like, I can't, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not from, like, a, like a rich home, mm -hmm. not even um, average, not yeah. even mid, uh, middle class. Yeah. I'm, co I'm coming from, like, the... The streets, you know what I mean? Streets, streets. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, of course, that was tough because you see people who have better lives. You go to church and you see people who they call first for when they want to share rice. You know, I, I, I guess you don't get this. No, part. I don't know. You just, <laughs> when they want to share rice for yeah. church, you get people when they give first. Like, mm -hmm. there are people that they, because of their parents yeah. and stuff, so they give them food first in church. Okay. Oh, because and they're then, maybe like, yeah, they're because higher. like they're higher. So, mm -hmm. like, we are the people they give last. Okay. And stuff. So, um, Potako wasn't what was tough. It was yeah. just the way I lived in Potako and the way I grew up. Yeah. yeah. How was that? How was, except, because you know, when you're living in something, when you're living in an environment that is like tough or hard or whatever you don't I think about myself right so when I grew up growing up I didn't live in like the greatest environment like it was it was in the but in the moment it didn't seem like that in the moment it was mm -hmm. just living like you're just experiencing like you're just you're in Nigeria you're living your life like mm -hmm. you're in your world mm -hmm. it's just life you don't see anything more than that and then I took a trip back to Nigeria um, for the first time two years ago now or maybe a year and a half ago and that was my first time going back since mm -hmm. leaving when I was six years old um since leaving at that point and I went back I decided to like go back to like where I used to live like the area just to really like you know just it just looked remember like it. hell I, re I, got, like, <laughs> I, I ended up actually vlogging this but I remember getting there and like I was like whoa like <laughs> this is this was my reality like this is yeah. how we were living yeah. like this is outside this is like uh, this like I couldn't believe it yeah. but then I was thinking that's so interesting because growing up I didn't see, see that, that i didn't see that oh do, there's nah, water do, outside do you, do you know this, see... this scary thing is people live like that for like 27 years yeah. before they even get to travel to see how Anything the other else. part of the world looks so imagine living like that all your life mm. and people have lived like that on and then they gave birth and then the, their children have lived like that and it keeps going like that they mm. don't have a chance to even see what it looks like in lekki lekki is still in nigeria but yeah. people live a life where they don't even know what lucky feels like talk more of when you bring them here it's like what it's, what it's, a, it's, a, it's, a two, it's like two different worlds and that was like a jump for me too because yeah. like that was that was my reality that's like me till i was 23 and stuff so yeah coming out here and seeing 
how life is being lived it's outside. It's, it's, it's really different. Did you ever feel, from when you were growing up and like seeing everything that was going on, did you ever feel like you wanted to get out of, you know, the, the of course I, that you I, had? Of course I knew that there was a better life. Mm-hmm. Of course I knew that. And that was one, that has always been one of my um, motivations. Knowing that there's a better life. Mm-hmm. I, I sleep at night with YouTube, New York, Loft raining in new york cloth that's what i sleep with <laughs> mm. because that's what you wanted for yeah, yourself because of course i knew there was a better life so yeah yeah and i think that was one of the reasons too why i didn't have it easy because probably my friends are like chilling yeah they, this is all they know but of, i'm sleeping with new york loft so yeah 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 it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, i yeah. am not happy i'm not i'm not i'm not in the vibe i'm yeah. not in their vibe it's, it's almost as if like you're you're doing everything you can to keep yourself outside of being yeah. in fact in in like the reality that mm-hmm. you're facing and that's actually really true because i feel i find that that's almost like the best way mm-hmm. to allow yourself to not be too fully immersed in like the life that is your, your real life, it's like you're manifesting. Yeah, it's like fair. you're manifesting for fair. like a bigger life for yourself. It's just not living with what you have at the point. It's mm. like living with what is what what is in the future. Mm. Sometimes it's not so good because you get lost in reality. You get lost in, you don't, you can't, uh, you can't, you're not in, you're not in reality yeah. sometimes yeah. because you are working with the things that are in future already. Mm. Yeah. What was your dynamic like with your mom growing up, especially considering like it, it was tough? Did that, did that affect the relationship at all? No. Um, so I left my parents when I was very young. I left my mom when I was 13 years old and, um, yeah, I never had so much time with my, my parents because how, how, how young I left. Mm-hmm. But I and my mom has been, the relationship is not the best mm. working. We both are working on it to make it the best. But mm. of course, um, I and my mom, we're cool. Mm. We're very cool. Everybody always has a very interesting relationship with their parents. Some people mm. are like super close. Some mm. people are like, you know. No, I'm so, I feel like I'm super up. close yeah. to her. But I, I feel uh, there's just something that that the long time away from her actually did to mm. us, did to our relationship. But I feel Was like there a reason you had to leave? Um I have always been this restless person, very restless. Um, always looking for the next thing to do and stuff. And f- for some very good reasons, my mom had always believed in me. She trusted my decisions. She supported me and stuff. Mm. So even when I left the house at 13 and I was living with friends, if she was like, good, it's cool. Mm. So um, I feel like I have a good, very good relationship with her, but I left for a long time and um, doing music and doing everything that I could to become uh, who I want to be, mm. uh, but still we're cool. Yeah. How? So, how, what about your siblings? What is that like? Is it, do you have older siblings? You have no. I have younger siblings. I yeah. feel like I still have the same relationship issues with them. Yeah. Um, because you left so early. Yeah, uh, because I left so early yeah. and I stayed away too long. But we're close. We talk every day. It's mm. like, but there's just that, you know, almost like um yeah. like a barrier. Yeah, just yeah, one I get what you mean. Thing. And it's like even though you want that barrier to be like. Mm not there you it's almost, just there it's just there it's just there you can't take it out how do you feel about that uh well no well that's not a problem we yeah. all working on it too um i feel like they know they see it and then my kind of life the place where i am right now is just mm. it's natural yeah natural we're, we're all good yeah my family and i were i love that yeah. so you kind of um you blew up very quickly you know, from with your music, like it, it almost feels like there was a, a an instant life change that kind of happened. Mm. So how was that for you? Was that something that you kind of expected for yourself or was that something that and as it happened, it, it was almost, it was a shock to yourself too? I don't know if I'll say it was a shock. I don't think I ever was shocked when I, with the way the thing happened, because I had always known that I was going that way with mm. my life. Um, of course, I knew very well where I was going. I had to quit school for it. So, um, wait, what age did you quit school? Uh, I quit school at twenty four. Okay. Uh, no, twenty twenty three actually. Mm-hmm. Twenty three or so. Twenty two. Twenty two years. Yeah. Twenty two. Wow. So. Um, was that uni? Yeah, that was uni. Okay. So I quit school for it, and um, I knew I knew I was going somewhere. So when the whole thing happened, it just happened fast in mm. such a way that it went from one to 70. 
I don't think it's fast anymore. I used to think it's, it was fast, but uh, now I'm beginning to realize that it just happened the way it was supposed to happen. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't so much of a shock. I, I don't know. I don't know. I but you. I feel like everything happened the way they were supposed to happen. How did you handle the drastic life change, especially considering like the kind of upbringing that you had and the environment that you were used to seeing to now almost now being able to experience that New York? Now, now that's, you know, I feel like that's one of the reasons why I say I, I am strong. I feel like um, a lot of people who, who got it the way I did. And then I think I'm also such a... I'm also such a person and I'm learning myself every day. Yeah. Um, because every, every, everybody who blew up from the ghetto, yeah. they're enjoying their lives. They're busy flying, mm. and partying and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I never had that. You never had the experience no, I never of that had, I never had that. I never had, it was tough for me. It was like hiding for me. It was hiding. And I'm trying to figure out what and what. And that's one. That's why I'm so much more interested in interested in myself more than I'm interested in what is happening because yeah. I feel like I am so. Uh, I don't know. I'm learning myself every day. Mm. I feel like there's always something new um, about me that mm. I I'm discovering every time. Yeah, um, I, I never had it the way every other person did. I had it differently, and. Um, I want to break that down a little bit. I feel mm -hmm. like it's important to kind of understand that. Okay. I can kind of see in your face too that it, I feel like that air in your life was like quite a big stage. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about not experiencing that that kind of, I guess, I don't know, would you call it like fun or like the... No, of course it was fun. Yeah. Of course all the attention, the girls, everything, mm -hmm. the money. Yeah. Of course that was fun. But then for some reasons, I was, it was, uh, I was disconnected. I was really disconnected mm. from... It felt like two different things happening. Like I'm, I'm this, and this is happening, and I'm trying to find a way to balance it. What so I was off. I went mm -hmm. off. I think that's it. It actually rubbed off in my. It's still, it's still there in my life where I am off of everything. I'm not on social media. Yeah. Uh, not like I'm not on social media. I'm, I, I know, but <sighs> yeah, but I'm not like the active guy who yeah. is there, who knows if somebody's. You know everything that's happening. Yeah. yeah, I think all my my beginning, my my start start of my journey yeah. actually um, shaped me to to what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So describe that to me because I I still I feel like I just want to break it down a little bit further. So there's two. You were saying that there was there was like two sides. There was a side where your mm -hmm. life is that you go. There was on there was a Stanley. There was a Stanley, and yeah. then there was a Normale. And what was the difference between the two? The two was Omale. Omale was. Omale was Stanley's dream that came to reality wow. before he was even ready. I, I don't know if I wasn't yeah. ready, but then it was like I was still living in Stanley and now Omale was flying. Yeah. So I had to find a way to grow into Omale and become Omale. So yeah, but with time, I understood a lot more. Mm -hmm. Um I learned, I grew, and I learned how to just become and not wanting to be. Mm. Like, I just now live my life. Yeah. And yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. I think um, I, I'm still, I feel like I'm still like processing that a little bit because I find it so interesting. But I'm just thinking, in terms of even being able to analyze and like for you to even understand the difference between the two, mm -hmm. between Stanley, between Omale, like, how do you? Like, how would you describe the two? Like, what, what, at that point, especially at that point, like, was Stanley still, I don't know, still trying to deal with the fact that he comes from this kind of background? Or was Omale now, like, the superstar that everybody loves and they're saying, you're amazing. And you're thinking, Stanley isn't amazing. Omale is, you know what I mean? Like, what yeah. was like what was the difference between the so, two? So one thing is um, social media. Mm. Um, so I had a life mm -hmm. and then it changed. It changed very fast. And then there's now millions of people, thousands of people tweeting about me. All, everybody's pouring their perspective of mm. me on mm. social media. And I'm busy reading this thing. I'm like, the boy from, I just came, bro. And it was pandemic. I was locked in the house. I was not even going outside to mm. see the reaction of people. I was yeah. locked inside. And then, so this is me reading a bunch of people's idea of me. And then those things are sticking to my head. Mm. And then and then 
I go outside and then the way I see them read about, I see them write about Omale, I want to become that Omale, but I am Stanley. <laughs> so a lot of that wow. is too much information and I'm, wow. it's like, okay, okay, yeah, this person, yeah, Omale is this, yeah, Omale is my, what some of Omale is, I can't remember, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. it's, it's a lot. I, so this is me trying to be the person that they want me to be that the fans think that I am mm. and but I am actually that person it's just that I need to I just needed time to grow and just let that part of me come out yeah yeah um well as time gets on um I became more comfortable like I said yeah I learned and I'm living my life right now. I'm very happy right yeah. now. I'm I'm on my lay right now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I've like, well, always been on my lay with you know. I'm, Stanley. I'm now yeah. on my lay with Stanley. Stanley. Like, like advanced. The two, yeah, like the two you feel me. Yeah. How long did it take for that to happen? It took a while. Um, it took until my last album yeah. for that to happen. Uh, Boy alone. Yeah. Uh, the process of making Boy alone was the process of me learning. That I am actually on my lay mm. and stuff. So was it was it the writing of the? Because I can imagine maybe it was during. It was the writing. The, the process of like writing, making the music, making yeah. the music, making the album. Mm. I learned a lot during that. Do you know what comes to mind? And you can let me know if this is true or not. Um, I almost feel like just the sheer fact of you being able to. Okay, so you come out with a song, the mm-hmm. song blows, and mm-hmm. everybody's like, "Oh my lay, da da da," and you're like, "Ah, like, am I going to be able to do this again? Like, is this actually truth? Like, I'm almost like I'm a, I'm a liar. Almost mm-hmm. like, ah, I don't know mm-hmm. if I can, I can, you know, make mm-hmm. this happen again. Mm-hmm. That the fact that you were able to do it again mm-hmm. made it easier for you to accept that. No, you know what? Mm-hmm. I am this person. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, the time that I spent, I've been around since my first, my first, my debut. Yeah, it's been three years since then and i'm here bro i'm still making music and i'm still i'm still on my day um of course that gives you a certain kind of confidence yeah you, know, you just understand how it, yeah it wasn't a fluke i'm yes. not a fluke i'm actually who i think that i am um yeah with time like i said i grew i learned i became more comfortable yeah. with even more evidence that i can do it and i've done it and i've done it done it three years yeah. now it's like yeah and um, I'm also going to use this chance to advise people who are coming up. You just have to believe in yourself. Um, if you've done it once and twice, if you've done it once, you can do it again. If you have actually done it once, you mm. can definitely do it again. You just have to believe. I love that. Mm. I, feel so, I feel so proud of you. Give me a high five. Mm. I love that. <laughs> okay, so I want to just change the trajectory of the conversation a little bit, um, but just mm. talk about how intentional you are with the kind of people that you work with. Mm. I When I was listening to Boy Alone, especially the deluxe version, I was like, oh, there's... It, a lot of people who were here, it's like very unexpected. And when we spoke, like one thing, um, when we had that car conversation, one thing that you made very clear was that like, you don't, you just don't believe in having every Tom and Harry in your music. It's about working with the right people, the people who you vibe with genuinely. So I want to talk about the process of working with someone like Justin Bieber and how that was like for you. Yeah, working with Justin Bieber was was fun. Mm. It was really fun. I always say it's like one moment of my life that I I can't forget easily. Um, yeah, but working with Justin Bieber was really good. It was easy because I, I had contact with him way before he, we, we even did the song. Yeah. I had contact with him from Get Lead from my first project. Okay. So we started well, texting and was stuff. Was it that he heard the song and then we Oh, yeah, he, he, he's, he's a fan. Okay. Yeah, he'd always been a fan. So he texted and ever since then we've been talking until we did attention. So that was like one of my sweetest collaborations ever, the Justin Bieber collaboration. What did you learn from that experience? Did it teach you anything? Yeah, I met him only twice mm. so far. I met him just twice and... Yeah, it's he's such a human, uh, and I love him so much. He's such a natural person. What do you mean by he's such a human? You meet people, and you can't find a human being in them. It, you can see clearly yeah. see that they're trying to be something. They are trying to be something. Mm. Yeah. Do you feel like that's something you're able to suss out in people quite quickly? Oh yeah, I, I can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can because I've been there too long, so I know how he feels. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. So talk to me about the other artists that you've not necessarily worked with, but how important it is for you to work with people that you have a genuine, like authentic vibe with or the people that you can see, maybe the, hu- is it about like, if you work with someone is because you see the humanness in them or is it because what, basically what does it really take for you to be able to work with someone? Talk to me about the intentionality about the people that you work with. 
I go with the vibe. I can't even say there's a reason why I do certain things yeah. with people. I think I just move with the vibe, how it feels, how where I am at the point, what kind of sound I'm making, and the kind of human being too. It's just the vibe. It's really not about because I want this one one night. It's just basically the vibe. Mm. I go with the vibe. How important is it for you to have a, a good relationship with your fans? Like if you have a very, very loyal yeah. fan base, I want to say. It's something that I've been create. I've been working for so, for so long now. Yeah. Um, this is one thing that I have always um, wished for. A fan base like like mine mm. is is really rare to to get that. You feel me? It's something that I have intentionally built over time, and I feel like in the next four or five years, it's going to be something really deep. Deep, yeah. How do you build that level of that depth with your audience for them to even be able to tell you their opinions on things and for them it, to feel invested on the journey? It, it 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 takes time. Honestly, it takes time, and it takes um, it takes time, and it takes people being able to connect with you. And now that's one thing that I've noticed about myself is my movement, my life. A lot of people can relate to them. Mm. So it's just, this is me just dragging everybody that can relate, that understand, that see me and see themselves. I'm just dragging them with me. And as I'm growing, they're growing through my mm. music because my music is growing. You can hear some new stuff you mm -hmm. hear. You can hear the place where I am at. So yeah. if you, if you believe then if you could connect with me from get laid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're still, it's like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, it's let's almost as together. if like, it's like how you're you're growing and mm. like evolving and stuff. It's like they're growing and evolving mm -hmm. with you and guys are mm. kind of doing of that course. journey like together. Of course, like my fans are, my fans are basically, I know my fans because my fans are like me. Mm. A lot of my fans are like me. There's like, they can hear themselves in me. That's mm. why they believe so mm. much, yeah. They can hear themselves and me. They can hear the things that they say at night in mm -hmm. their bed that they don't want to tell anybody. I yeah. say it in the songs. So when they hear that, it's like, bro, this is my bro, brother. Yeah. <laughs> you know how people label, and I'm sure you've seen this, people will just label your, your stuff, your work, Afro depression, right? Mm -hmm. How did you feel? Because I read, I remember when I used to see those kind of things, like on Twitter especially, and I'll just be like, people just don't get the importance of like being able to relay your truth and like your journey in your music. That's what I personally connect with. So when you read a comment like that, how did you take it at the time when it kind of first? The Afro depression is a, it's a vibe. You know, enjoying it. You know, ah. It's a vibe. <laughs> I, feel, I feel you. It's a vibe. Um, um, Yes, I I don't mind how people want to interpret my music, mm -hmm. how my fans want to interpret my music. I really don't mind as long as it's not in a in a negative way. If they enjoy it as Afro depression, then of course that's the vibe. Other people enjoy it as dance. Mm -hmm. People go to the club and listen to it. People, mm -hmm. so it depends. Whatever anybody's feeling like um labeling it to uh, to enjoy and understand it it's fine by me i love that yeah afro depression yeah afro groove yeah. afro whatever <laughs> afro bro. whatever you want Let's to call go. it <laughs> yeah no i feel you you know you're in an industry that we hear so much about an industry that can seem sometimes like really toxic and just like really just a lot how do you maintain like your sense of self i'm not in, in that industry, industry. i'm on. not in the industry you think i'm not i'm not i am just me on my league, making mm -hmm. music. I'm not in anybody's in the street. Um, this is just me making music and living my life and documenting as much of me that I can document before I leave the earth and uh, leave my mark. I'm not in the industry with you. I am not. I'm just on my league. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With what's kind of happened recently with Mobad's death and just thinking about, you know, the, the stories that's kind of come off the back of that. How do you, especially when with you being very clear on, you know, you not being in an industry, does uh, does what's happened and like what's come out off the back of the, the recent news that we've all been exposed to make you want to stand on that ground of like, I'm not in the industry, I'm not a part of this because of like how dark it can be or how dark it seems? Um, I have felt like this for so, for so long now where I don't feel like I'm part of any, of any industry. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why, but this is just where I found myself. I don't feel like I am part of any industry. I just mm. feel like Omale and I wake up every day and live like Omale. So you said before in an interview that I watched, she was basically like, if you 
if you weren't doing music, you'll mm. be a pastor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how <laughs> did we get there? How did we get there? Talk no, to me no, about no. that. I, I don't think I want to be, I, yeah. I don't think I would have ever been a pastor. I was really young when I said that. When was that? Was that like, was like maybe like two years ago. I was young. Nah. But um, at that point though, what was that? What was the reason? Probably, uh, maybe I just like, I just, I don't know. I don't mm. know why I thought I should, mm. I would have been a pastor. <laughs> Do you know what? I think maybe from the, the previous conversations that I've had with you, I kind of got the sense that you're, I think a lot of the stuff that you do comes from a very faith led place. So yeah. maybe because of how big of a role, like your, mm, mm, mm. your faith has played. Mm. Nah, I'm such a big believer in God. I believe in God. So I'm not really just trying to trust me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a Jesus guy or Allah guy. I just mm. believe in God. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, spiritual mm. very but i don't i still don't think i, I want to be, I yeah, be yeah, I, hate I would you. rather be swimming or yeah something, just become a... i want to break down was there a point where you i guess established that you know you believe in god and you're you're true to you're true to that that how you became someone who was like you know i'm not i'm when you decided i'm not religious i am a believer in god like what was that when was the moment where you recognize that for yourself and is there a difference I think as soon as I made money, mm. as soon as I made money, I just, I just, just switched. I don't know, I just switched. Um, I just believed in God and respected God and became more human than religion. I, I just don't, mm. I just don't enjoy religion anymore. Mm. I just what? Don't. Did you grow up in religion though? Uh, yeah, yeah. Which I one? grew up in a, in a very religious, not really religious, but I grew up in a Christian home. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in church. Mm. And then at some point I was gonna convert to Islam, mm. but now I'm at the point where I'm like, yeah, just God, just me and God, no, mm. no religion. No. Can I ask why? I was there. Was what aspects of religion? Because did I, you not find? I really don't, I really don't know anything. That's mm. the problem. That's mm. the thing. Like these books and everything that everybody's saying is, I know it sounds true, but these are just books that I cannot find evidence that this was written by by God mm. or his servant himself. Mm -hmm. So I, I just feel like I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. And as much as I know the Bible, I know Jesus, I know Allah. At the end, I, I don't have evidence. The only evidence I have is that there's a God who is moving me because mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm moving my body. I don't mm -hmm. know how I jump. Mm -hmm. I know there must be something that is somewhere that is in charge of yeah. this whole thing. So was there, yeah, was I there believe it's God. Was there a moment in your journey where you felt that that sense of God, that like a lot in you? Obviously, you said now, you know, when you jump or when you walk or when you this, you're like, you know, that that's not you and that is God like driving you. Mm. But was there are there particular moments that you're like, oh, no, nah, God is real. Like this is this is real. Of course, um, of course. Um, let me think when I like you know those moments that you're like, this is undeniable. Yeah, I've had a lot of that. Trust me, I've yeah. had a, I've been uh, near the experience. I've been close to where somebody was shot and he died and stuff. And I was just there, and it was like, grrr. <gasps> I've had a lot of experiences that. And what? Nothing happened. To, was it that you were yeah, close by? Yeah, yeah, I was close by, and I am. And I've had a lot of experience like that. So, of course, I know there's God. I know He's real. But I want you to give me an example of that one. I want you to give me an example of that one moment. Reason being is because I think sometimes... I right? think over time, I just... Yeah. And then for me to have come from where I came from yeah. to this point, of course, there must be God. Yeah. There must be God. 100%. Yeah. I think you were saying that your vibe has kind of changed a lot. And now that you feel that you are... You're in a more... Did you say spiritual? Holy Spirit vibe. Like, yeah, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit vibe. Spirit. Talk to me about that. Like, obviously, with the new, you're working on a new album right now, right? Yeah, I'm working on a new so album. So what's the, what's the vibe that we're expecting from this new you vibe, see. new, yeah? You see. Uh, I can't get a little glimpse. <laughs> I can't get a little, little something. Oh, you see. Um, it's, it's a vibe. Just yeah. wait. The album is coming. Is it, is it close to what we've gotten from your previous work or is it completely different? I really cannot tell. I just go and make music the way I feel mm. at the time. Um, when you hear it, you're going to know how I feel. Amelie, what do you think you've done right in your journey? What, what do you think you've done right to get you to the point that you are at right now? Like one thing I feel like I've done right is to dare to be unique, dare to be different, dare to just focus on myself and mm. do what I love. It's one thing that I've done right. Dare to want to dress different or mm. make my music videos different or mm. make my sound different. That's really one thing. 
How dare to be unique, exactly. How important do you think that is for even our, anybody? It is very important. You need to learn that you're running your own race. Mm -hmm. You have to move on your own pace. Yeah. You have to find yourself. You have to go back to your roots. Mm. If you don't have mm. one, go yeah. find it. <laughs> yeah. And know that this is where you're coming from. Even though the whole world is going this way, and you know for sure because you feel good mm. doing it this other way. Just stick. You have to find it. Do you go back to your roots a lot? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah. I feel like I'm in my roots right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course London is yeah, not my yeah, roots, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> claim it. Yeah, but I feel like yeah, I'm always, I'm always there. I'm always stopping from, from always going back to where I come from. I'm always yeah. reading. I'm always just being, being, in, being there, listening to, yeah. to my people before me. Yeah. From where I can, yeah. All right, before we round things off, I have another a last bit of segment that I kind of do with my guests, which is called the Bello Box. Okay. So it's like my special box mm -hmm. that I always, it's kind of like a, a box that you never know what's to be expected mm -hmm. in there. It's always for, you know, the person I'm speaking to. Okay. So. Okay, let me let you open it because it's for you. I can guess. I can guess. What's what what do you think is inside? It's a shoe. Open it, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> open it, let's see. Oh, wow. Okay, so let me explain why that's in there. Tell me. All right, so recently, with obviously... Because if this is a gift <laughs> for me, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> let me tell you. So it's a symbol, it's more a symbol, basically. Okay. So I told you earlier that, like, I've just recently moved into this space and we're changing things up. And one thing I need is a little jingle, a little bit of a, you know, a little sound or something, right? Okay. That I might be able to, like, use for my show. And I'm like, wait, I've got Omelia coming on the show today. Like, yeah, yeah, he yeah. can create something real quick for me. He can give me a little yeah, jingle yeah, for yeah. the show. Of course I can. Do you know what I mean? So I thought I I'll put can. you on the spot. Okay. And give you a little task to do. I need a jingle. I need something. Yo, what's up? What's up, my people? This is Omelia. <laughs> And you're watching the Wumi Bello interview, right? Yeah. Is that? Anything? Yeah, Wumi I mean, Bello but Pop. but this is not the Jack kind of jingle. I mean, yeah, what's I, that? I, this no, is... no. I literally, you know, those kind of like, uh, like, hey, the Wumi hey, Bello show, the Wumi Bello show with Omale. <laughs> Keep watching the Wumi Bello show with Omale. Is that the jingle for me? Yeah, that's the jingle. Let's see how people feel about that jingle. Yeah, I don't know. Is I'm, a, that... I'm a superstar. Just yeah. take that thing. Just take that part I'm a and just run with it. Role play with yeah, you. <laughs> I hear you. Thank you. This has been amazing. I'm so excited for your journey you. and what's Thank about you to happen. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you for having me today on your show. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Mm, I did.